here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. For the first time, joining us here on the show today, Rob Leahy joins us from Simply Rugged Holsters, makers of some really cool leather holsters. Hey, Rob, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, Tom. Well, good. Now, uh, we got actually introduced through our mutual friend uh, Ed Head, and from what I see of you online, you are kind of a regular range rat over at the gun site. <laughs> I'm always seeing pictures of you over there. Yeah, we've developed a really good relationship between gun site and Simply Rugged, and uh, it's been a dream come true. And but how'd you get wonderful. how'd you get in how'd you get into making leather holsters in the first place? Uh, grew up here in Chino Valley and lived on a farm and had knives and tools that needed leather cases. Mr. Crawford at the high school shop class taught us how to do leather work on Fridays, and that's where I took <laughs> off learning to do that. Shop class. I got. I love that. Oh, yeah. I mean, yep. you know, and now you've got this extensive line of, of leather Obviously, holsters and slings and pouches and anything else you can make out of leather. And the obvious question becomes, in a in a world and a time when Kydex and plastic is the super fantastic these days, why do people want leather at all? People still appreciate good quality. They still want the best they can get. They want something that lasts, something that's going to look good, wear like iron and be there for a generation, uh, something that won't break, something that people won't be tempted to break the window out of your car when they see your holster melting. You know, they want a good, good piece of durable goods. And that's what we do with leather. And then we get into the whole, hey, we can put alligator or shark skin or ostrich or elephant on it, and that brings it to a whole new level of, yeah, yeah. wow, I want that. Yeah. We're going full barbecue gun now. Oh, yeah. Yep. It ain't Prada, but she'll be proud, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and you do all kind of tooling on and all. It's interesting. You mentioned I have had a couple of um, Kydex holsters break on me. I mean, like, you know, oh, yeah. straps break and things. And I mean, like, I was in a restaurant one time. I had a strap pop off of one, and this holster is, like, sliding down. And I'm going, well, this is <laughs> not good. You know, and if you use new gear, you will have it fail. And it's not just plastic or Kydex. I've, I've had leather stuff. In fact, the way I got to making my inside the waistband straps is I was trying to just tuck a pancake holster inside my waistband. And I ended up with a four inch end frame down at the cuff of my jeans. <laughs> and a pancake holster and clumping out, you know, the building trying to look inconspicuous. I was like, I could make a little strap and bolt it on and it won't move. And that's how that got invented. Well, obviously, from what you're saying is you don't just make this stuff, you use it as well. Oh, yeah. It all started from my own desire to have something you know, I carried in frames and everybody was carrying K frames and I'm an in frame size guy. I like carrying in frames, could not find in frame holsters. Roy Baker went and died on me. He made a great in frame holster. Yeah. So he I had did. to make my own version. So the Baker pancake holster, right? Oh yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, way, way yep. back. Yeah. And you're a big guy and you can carry a big revolver. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm looking on your website for those who want to follow along, go to simply rugged, dot com you got full flap holsters you got all sorts of you know cool looking stuff you got slings and pouches and the rest of it tell me about leather where do you get leather and tell me about different grades of leather okay most of our leather comes from herman oak it's in st louis it started in 1882 um it is in the fourth generation of the the herman family um, it is a natural process. They used oak bark, originally cut on the banks of the Mississippi and Missouri. Now it's South American hardwoods they bring up, and it's basically a tree bark tea that they soak this American beef hide in for 30-day periods. They soak it into different densities of, of wow. this tree bark and water. No kidding. 
very natural process, gives it a real hard, firm tannage, super dense, almost like horse hide. It really stands up well. You, When you see an 80-year-old saddle made of Herman Oak leather, it, you can tell because it's still blonde russet color, not black. Huh. Know, some of this leather is tanned with lesser methods, and it just it turns black and ugly. This stuff stays good and supple for years and years. Interesting. Now, I mean, obviously, if you're going to be wearing, you know, your big revolver, uh, makes sense. You could have a cool leather holster. But what about people who want to carry, like, just a regular, you know, either full size or mid or even micro nine everyday carry? Is there a, a purpose or a reason for going leather for that? Oh, comfort would be the first thing. They just, they ride with you, they move, they don't squeak, they, you know, they don't gouge into your side. We do a lot more with, like, the 365 Ruger Max 9 Hellcat Mm -hmm. um, in the last couple years than we do high powers in 1911s. And it's four guys and gals carrying every day. Hmm. And when you get a little slim pancake that rides on your belt, you can... Tuck it in there. You can adjust it if you need to on your belt. We were just, I was at Ed, at lunch with Ed, and um, we were talking about that, how you can, you know, when you're walking, you want the holster a little farther back. You get in your car, you fasten your seatbelt. You can slide it a couple inches forward on your belt, fasten the seatbelt, still get to the gun. Hmm, okay. All right. I got to I take a break here. I'm going to come back when we do. I want to talk about how to take care of leather because, uh, I mean, it is a natural substance. It's not like plastic. You just buy it and forget it. You got There are things you need to do. Uh, we're talking with Rob Leahy from Simply Rugged Holsters, simplyrugged.com. Well, actually, I got two favorite revolvers I like to carry. It's a 686 uh, Plus Deluxe 3-inch 7-shot 357, and I have a 3-inch 44 Special Smith Model 24 that I dearly love, and those just seem to be better in leather. Oh, absolutely. Hard to beat an in frame and 44 special any day. It, those, it really is. Yeah. One of the things I see that you have on your website, you got uh, chest rigs. You a fan oh, yeah. of those? Oh, yeah. Yeah, developed that in a uh, flash of inspiration while getting charged by a brown bear on the Kenai. And, mm. uh, yeah, it's been very successful for us ever since. Son of a gun. Okay. You call it the Chesty Puller, named after uh, <laughs> the highest decorated Marine in the 20th century. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. He, uh, I like that. The hero of mine, I'm a historian, uh, amateur historian, and was in the Army, really admired him, and mm-hmm. I saw the opportunity. Ah, we'll get another generation remembering this great man. And oh, there you some go. people say I was being cynical, maybe, but mostly it's to honor a great man. Hmm. Okay. All right, so tell me about taking care of leather, because, I mean, it's it will dry out, right? Oh, yeah, it will. It, okay. it will sun, rain, uh, living in Alaska for years in the northwest and northern Idaho, leather gets wet and soaked, and then it dries hard, um, closes mm-hmm. up the pores. you got to penetrate the pores of the leather to rejuvenate it, get those fats and oils back in it. Two particular things. One, real quick and easy, you can get it most auto zones. Kroger Groceries is called Lexol, L-E-X-O-L. It will penetrate and rejuvenate the leather. For more long-term, when you actually get deteriorated leather, like I collect old holsters, um, I got Johnny Hart's. uh, He was the other uh, Lone Ranger. I got his Lawrence... 120 and hmm. it was dry it had been stored for probably 50 years without a drop of oil on it it was okay. dust was coming off it i got an item out of tennessee called black rock and it is just like brill cream a little dab will do you i put one on about as big as my thumbnail and just rub that all over that holster and it looks like new and it rejuvenates it and polishes it up so black Luxol rock. and black okay. rock okay um, over the years, I have 
beat this drum hard, and after a while I realized that people don't hear it until you said it like a hundred times. And that is the value in the whole idea of carrying a gun. People spend a lot of time thinking about a holster and they forget about the belt. And my whole deal is, you know, oh. without a good belt, you're, you're wasting your time because it, it's going to be uncomfortable to the point where you often will not even carry after a while. You say, I just, I can't carry this thing. And then when people finally buy a good belt, or I, not by good belt, I keep telling them, it's got to be a gun belt, not something you can buy at a department store. There's a difference. Oh, yeah. And then they, they, they call and they say, Tom, this is amazing. This is really comfortable. No, no, I'm going, I've been saying that for years. Did you not believe me? Oh, yeah. Preach it. Preach it. It, <laughs> it is the most important. It's the foundation. It's like building your house upon sand or building your house upon a rock. You got to have it on a rock. And if you don't have a good belt, it sags and sucks. And I saw it just yesterday in a local gun store. Nice young men, earnest young men showing me their leather holsters. And and one guy had a G48, and it was sagging his little fashion belt. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, send me an email. I will build you a belt. You know, so what makes a gun mission. belt? What's the difference? <sighs> Sturdy. It it. It's ideal if it feels, fills the loops of the holster ideally, but that is overemphasized by a lot of gun riders, not by a lot of guys that carry holsters every day and build holsters. Mm -hmm. If you have a pancake holster, Roy Baker made most of his holsters with two-and-a-half-inch belt slots for the police trade. Guys carried mm -hmm. them off duty on inch-and-a-half-inch thick garrison belts. The wide set loops supported the gun, even a big end frame because hmm. of the wide set loops design of the pancake, but a sturdy okay. belt, either a single thickness, about a quarter inch or a double laminate. It can be even thinner if it's a laminate because of the laminate nature and the strength and the sewing and the glue. But I like inch and three quarter for everything, especially guys, guys, if you're over 45 inches in diameter, carry an inch and three quarter belt. Otherwise it's like tying a kite string around a watermelon and pulling it tight. It's not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so if, you, if your belt is more than 45 inches long, you need, the, you need the wide belt. Yes, do that. <laughs> and you know, I've seen for years guys, Oh, it can't, you can't pinch it like that. The pinch test means nothing. If your belt's tight, you shouldn't be able to pinch it. I made soft Latico leather belts for years because that's all mm -hmm. I could get was harness repair kits out in the boonies. So, but I have some soft, soft, comfortable inch and three quarter inch belts that I can put a pair of in frames and four speed loaders and a big Bowie knife wow. and carry it around all day comfortably because the belt's snug and sturdy. So. And you've got specific instructions on your website on measuring the belt. And you say, if you do it wrong, you don't follow our, our instructions here. You're not, you know, we're not going to guarantee this thing, but if you do it right, it's going to work for you. There's a specific way to measure. Yes. That, it comes from years of people, well, you know, say, what kind of belt do you, well, I'm a 38. So, no, no, your genes say 38, but you're not a 38. You're a 40, 42. And they'll mm -hmm. argue and say, you know, I know it's hard to believe, but the fashion industry lies. And all those Heck tempering yes. little guys aren't telling they, you the truth. They're making you feel yeah, good. It's, a, it's really a 40 or a 42, and they'll mark it 48 just to make you feel good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, so, and you say, hey, I could still fit into a 38. No, you can't, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it my is, gosh. It is funny how vanity comes into play in that, and sometimes we have to be very circumspect, especially talking with some gals, and you know, that right. secret information we never divulge. We just want that number <laughs> to make the belt once right, and you'll be happy, we'll be happy. There uh, you go. Well, I sure appreciate you spending some time with us, Rob, and I want to direct people to your website. It's uh, simplyrugged.com if people are interested in, in leather and leather holsters and such. Uh, you're making some good stuff there. Well, thank you very much, Tom. It's a pleasure.